This is a scene from one of my favorite movies, The Truman Show. It's a scene where the main character, Truman Burbank, discovers that his reality, the world he grew up in, the beautiful sky he grew up admiring, was all a lie. The truth was that he was in a, in a world, in a movie studio, since he was born. Placed into this giant studio since he was born. Surrounded by actors who were trying to make his life miserable for the entertainment of those who watched the show. Truman grew up believing that his reality, his world, was real. Now, this scene scared me for one reason. It made me question whether my life, our lives, were no different from his. Hi, I'm Ma Jian Swang, and today I want to talk to you about the simulation theory, what it is, and why you should or maybe shouldn't care. Now, the question I want to ask you is, what if our world, our reality, our entire existence was merely a simulation. First, let's talk about what a simulation is. A simulation is defined as a model that is an imitation of a real-world process or system. Now, simulations are used everywhere in our world today, whether that's to train doctors to perform surgeries before they go on to real patients, or to train pilots to learn to fly planes, to model expensive processes like rocket launches, or to entertain ourselves. We play games like The Sims, now, 50 years ago, we created our first computer game, Pong. Now, as many of you are familiar, this game is a simple game where you hit a ball back and forth between two sides of the screen. Now, we might see this as a simple, stupid game now, but at the time, it was seen as a great accomplishment. It was something we've never been able to do before. 50 years later, we're past a stage where our games look like this, and we're now at a point where our games look like this, more realistic than ever before, with stunning, beautiful graphics. These simulations are becoming closer and closer to our world. Therefore, it's being hard, becoming harder and harder to distinguish from our reality. We're already on our way to creating more lifelike simulations, but our only limitation is our computing power. Our technology simply does not allow us to create simulations of this scale, one where everything would be simulated, one that's indistinguishable from our own. Now, our processing sleep power of our computers is growing and has been for the past few years. This means that in a few years, maybe 100, 200, even 1,000 years, sometime in the future, we'll reach a point where our technology allows us to create worlds that are indistinguishable from our own, one where everything would be simulated. Our body, our cells, the atoms that make up those cells, down to quantum behaviors would all be simulated. Our brains, the neurons that make up our brain, our consciousness would all be simulated. Now, if this was possible, if it was possible for us to create these simulations that are indistinguishable from our own, wouldn't we do it at a massive scale, at the scale of billions or trillions? I mean, imagine the possibilities of these simulations. We could create simulations that allow us to model the spread of a deadly virus, to stop a global epidemic from ever occurring. We could use simulations to study our history 10 years back, 100 years back, even thousands of years back. There's no doubt that if we had the power to create these simulations, that we would do it at a massive scale. When we had the power to produce computers, for whatever reason, we mass-produced that technology. Everyone in this room has their own computer, whether that's in the form of a laptop, a mobile phone, or a tablet. Now, if this were to apply to simulations, if we could create millions, billions, or trillions of simulations, could it be possible that in just one of those, there exists a simulation that is just like our own reality? one that is indistinguishable from our own? And if that were possible, if it were possible for us to create these simulations, could it, be, could it then be possible that someone somewhere, some time ago, has already beaten us to that stage? That someone has created trillions of these simulations, and in just one of those simulations, 
there exists a simulation which is our own reality that we are living in right now. CEO of SpaceX and Tesla, Elon Musk, has said that there's a billion to one chance that we're living in base reality, a reality that's not simulated, one that forms the basis of all realities. Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at Oxford, suggests that under the condition that one, humans don't go extinct first, and two, humans in the future still want to create simulations, and three, we are in a simulation right now. Now, it's not just Nick Bostrom or Elon Musk. Famous scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson, along with philosophers and physicists from famous universities like MIT and Harvard, have gathered at a conference to discuss just this topic. And several of them argue that we are most likely living in a simulation right now. But some of you might be thinking right now, well, so what? Why do I care? Why do you care? And why should anyone care? The truth is, well, being in a simulation shouldn't change a thing. It shouldn't mean that our lives suddenly become meaningless. It shouldn't change a thing. I'm not here today to convince you that we are in a simulation, because frankly, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that we're in a simula simulation or not, because, well, it shouldn't have an effect on our lives. It won't be until another 100 years until we figure out for sure whether we're in a simulation or not. So why waste our lives on a theory that has yet to be proven? We've been placed into the, to this universe-sized playground where we're allowed to do virtually anything we want. We've been gifted with consciousness, with feelings, with thoughts and emotions, with friends, and with family. The universe has given us the privilege of waking up each and every day with food to eat, with air to breathe, and a life that could be much, much worse. But no, we were lucky enough to have this life. The truth is, well, unlike Truman, we aren't in a giant movie studio. We aren't surrounded by people who are trying to make our lives miserable, and we're not in a movie. This, this is real to us. Because reality is what we choose to define it to be, not what others define for us. We may just be a simulation to those who created us, or not, but this is our reality because we choose to define it to be our own reality. The experiences that we have and gain in this life, in this reality of ours, they're real and they're genuine because they're genuine to us. So it doesn't matter whether we're in a simulation or not. So ultimately, well, simulation or not, you're the one who decides what you want your reality to be. Thank you.